What's good, y'all? Shigama Kai. Welcome back to my channel. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers, and that subscriber helps. Over here on this channel, we talk about the NBA. So if you enjoy the NBA as much as I do, please subscribe. And today, we're going to be talking about the Atlanta Hawks and, you know, what I think they're going to do this season, what I think they're going to do in the future, and just what I think about the players on that team, you know, overall. So the Atlanta Hawks last season, they had that crazy postseason run where they went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals after beating the Knicks in the first round. They beat Philadelphia in the second round, which was the, which was the shocker. But ultimately, they fell to the, you know, eventual champion, you know, Milwaukee Bucks. And last season, I think that was the perfect year for them to be on, like, kind of the, the platform that they were on last year because I feel like the Atlanta Hawks, the way they built their team isn't really being talked about a lot. And I feel like the way they built their team is something that a lot of NBA teams could look, you know, look to in the future when they're trying to, you know, build new teams or whatnot. Because what they've done is that they've created a lot of, not not created, they oh, yeah, created. They've created a team where there's a lot of guys who can put the ball on the floor and do things for themselves. But there's really that one main guy, Trey Young, who kind of runs the show over there. But when you look at their team, everybody about the name can really just kind of create their own shot and kind of just do things if an advantage is created for them beforehand like you know Kevin Porter he can put it on the, on the Kevin Porter he can put it on the ground and dribble uh, DeAndre Hunter John Collins Cam Reddish Danilo Gallinari who Williams like all of these guys are capable of you know taking a dribble taking two dribbles and just you know raising up for a shot and the way that that helps in the playoffs is that teams are obviously going to trap Trey Young so when they trap Trey Young you dump it up to somebody else when you have to send two or one guy that creates an advantage somewhere else on the floor. So when you look at what these guys can do, you know, it's not even advanced stuff. It's just, you know, simple one, two dribble pull-ups. And I just think that that kind of basketball is really, really important when it comes to having just one star on the team. Eventually, I think there's going to be more stars in Atlanta because, you know, it's a good city. They're a good team, nice young team. So I think that this is not going to be a problem they have forever. But right now, the biggest issue with the Hawks is that, like I said, their one true advantage creator, their one true star is only Trey Young. Like the other guys are cool, but if Trey Young isn't, you know, having a good game, more often than not, the Atlanta Hawks are gonna lose. And that's, you know, it's cool because you know they just finished their rebuild, and I just think that it's gonna happen, you know, naturally over time. Guys like DeAndre Hunter, guys like Cam Reddish are gonna, you know, be able to kind of just come out and just show why they're stars. And I want to talk about DeAndre Hunter especially because last season. I feel like he showed us a lot more than he did in his first season. And last season, he showed us that he has, you know, an above average handle for a wing. He's a really, really good pull-up shooter. And he just showed that he can be good, you know, on both ends. Now, granted, he only played, what was it, 20-something. He only played uh, 23 games because of injury. So it's just really the injury stuff with, with a lot of the young Hawks. It's just that... You know, they're injured, they're getting hurt, so they're not able to play as much as you would like them, get as much, you know, reps in, as, as much reps as you would like them to get. But last season, you know, John G. Hunter averaged 15 points. He upped his true shooter percentage from 53, you know, from 52 to 60, and it's just, everything looks a lot better. The mid-range game looked really good. The pull-up mid-range game looked really, really good. And I think that he's going to be the key to, to the Atlanta Hawks taking that next step. If he can become a guy who can, you know, consistently create his own shot, especially when Trey Young is not in the game, because that's another issue. When Trey Young leaves the game, there's not, you know, there's not really a guy to create advantages for other guys. So it's really just, you know, take turn ISO and take turn, you know, running the pick and roll. And it's just not, you know, the kind of basketball that the Hawks want to play. But, you know, eventually I feel like DeAndre Hunter can be the kind of guy who can run the second unit, who can, you know, make sure the Atlanta Hawks are, you know, kept the flow when Trey Young is on the bench. And another guy who I'm not as high on, but who I can, you know, see this kind of outcome for is Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish is a guy who can also, you know, he's shown kind of sort of flashes that he can create his own shot. But really what's shocking is the three-point shot because from three, he shot 26% last season. Now, when you think of Cam Reddish, I don't think he's that bad of a three-point shooter. And we look at his free throw numbers, we look at his mechanics, you can kind of see that I don't think he's going to be, the, um, you know, some 26, sub-30% three-point shooter for the rest of his career. But right now, it's just looking rough from there. But again, with him, it's a lot of health issues, and it's just a whole bunch of things with him not being able to stay on the court. So I think that when the health issues get, you know, in place, DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish are going to show why they can be the wings of the Atlanta Hawks' future. Now... The guy I want to talk about, you know, next is Kevin Huerta. I don't even know how to say his last name, but we're just going to call him Kevin. Kevin is a guy who's, a, you know, more than a shooter. I feel like he got branded as just a, you know, a shooter, white boy shooter. 
but he can actually put the ball on the floor a little bit. And we saw in the playoffs how he can, you know, go around screens, how he can pull up from mid ranges, how he can shoot, you know, catch and shoot threes, how he can shoot movement threes. Like Kevin, Kevin is a really, really good player. And I like him, you know, kind of as a role player guy for his Atlanta Hawks team moving forward. But, you know, the guy who I really like next to Trey Young is John Collins. And I was very happy when they re-signed him because John Collins and Trey Young is as perfect a matchup for players as you can have. John Collins is really, really athletic. He's really, really good at pick and roll, rolling to the rim. But he's also like a 40%, you know, three-point shooter. So he's spacing and he's vertical spacing. That is the perfect kind of guy you want next to a guy like Trey Young, who's, you know, an elite passer and who can, you know, do dangerous things out of the pick and roll and the mid range with the floaters and whatnot. So John Collins, but I do think that John Collins has kind of, you know, reached his ceiling as a player. Now we all know that development isn't linear. Development happens, you know, randomly. For all I know, next season, John Collins could be, you know, some great face up mid range creator. But from what I've seen so far, I don't think that he's gonna be able to reach that next level of player because the next step in will be able to, you know, be create his own shot. Now, can he dribble a little bit, you know, in a straight line, sure, like on fast break type? Sure, but I'm saying like in the half court, can he break somebody down for jump shots? Can he, you know, drive to the rim on his own efficiently? Like, do you want that kind of offense for him? Like, obviously you want that for him, but right now he's just not capable of that. And I don't see it really getting to a point where he is capable of that, but, you know, we'll see. But that was a great re-sign about Atlanta Hawks. They did really good with that. And uh, Clint Capella, I was happy when they got him in that trade because Clint Capella is a really, really good center. He's one of the best defensive centers in the league. And he's another guy who's vertical space and foot young. He's another guy who is really, really just perfect next to him because when you see the way that the Houston Rockets use Clint Capella and you see the way that James Harden was always throwing him lobs, and, you know, Clint Capella, he sets hard screens, he rolls to the rim hard, and he plays great defense around the rim. He's a great rebounder. So I just feel like he's a really, really good pickup for the Atlanta Hawks. And you know, who else is on this team? I really like the, the um, Yeka Kongu guy. And we, when, you, when you saw him in the playoffs, some of the defensive possessions he had against the MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, not, not the MVP of this year, the finals MVP, but some of the defensive possessions that he had, it's just that at his young age and his rookie year, he's bothering a guy like Giannis with his length. He's, you know, being in the right position. So that alone, you know, just tells me a lot about this guy. And, you know, he's going to be a versatile, a versatile defender. He's pretty athletic himself. So I'm really excited to, you know, see his future in the league. And, you know, who else they got on this team? Bogdan Bogdanovich, they signed him. And he's another guy who can kind of create the ball. He can kind of create with the ball in his hands, but he's also good off ball. Like, the way that the Atlanta Hawks built this team, it's kind of like death by committee. Like, they have nine guys who average double figures. And that's just, uh, you know, everybody's helping out the team. Everybody's scoring in their own ways. And I just feel like after the coaching change, they went from Lloyd Pierce, who was, you know, doing whatever, and then they went and grabbed Nate McMillan. Nate McMillan got these guys, you know, to be the great team that we saw they were in the second half of the season. And I feel like the Atlanta Hawks this season, you know, I've made a couple other videos about Eastern Conference teams. The Atlanta Hawks this year are in that Chicago Bull, you know, Boston Celtic, New York Knicks, Pacer, like kind of range. I feel like they can finish as high as, you know, 3-4. They can finish as low as 6-7. Like, with the way the East is, I just... I cannot firmly, you know, give a prediction yet. But the Atlanta Hawks, I think they're a really, really good team. I really think they're kind of the futuristic kind of team where everybody is capable of doing multiple things. Like, there's not guys who, you know, they only shoot, they only defend. There's like a lot of guys who can, you know, do a lot for the Atlanta Hawks on the, on the basketball court. And I feel like Trey Young, his next step is definitely to get the efficiency up. Because right now he's only 43% from the field and 34% from three. You would think a scorer like him would be more efficient, but like, I've made a video about this before. He takes these crazy, you know, random half-court shots, and, you know, his finishing around the rim isn't the best. He could, it's really masked by, like, the Florida game, but finishing around the rim, he has to kind of, you know, work on that, absorbing contact and all that stuff, you yeah, know. But Trey Young, he's a really, really good, good guy. I can see him being top 10 in the future. No matter the defensive issues, I think that scoring today in the NBA and passing and facilitating is at such a premium that his defense can kind of you know, be hidden because it's not like they're going to have guys, you know, attacking Trey Young every possession of every game. And they have the defenders to, you know, kind of hide Trey Young. They got Clint, they got DeAndre Hunter, they got Cam Reddish. So I just think that it's just, you know, really, really good. But yeah, man, if you stay in this video, thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.